Arcadia is the newest legend coming into Brawlhalla. She's got Greatsword, she's got Spear, 7744 stats, let's just jump right into it. Greatsword Ensig has two different versions. You have an uncharged version and you have a charged version. Uncharged, as you can see right here, hits grounded, it's an upward slash. The animation is similar to Jala, but in functionality, it's probably closer to Bryn Axe Neutral Sig, based on the fact that it hits on the ground here, it picks up, and then has a bit of active frames as the little petals there, it seems like, uh, are flowing, it's still active. And then the charged version jumps into the the animation is actually very quick. You'll notice it's just an immediate jump the moment you release it. You get those butterfly. It's kind of like Rayman's uh, Gauntlet Ensig in that it has that charged version. And as you can see right here, it does not hit grounded once you get those butterfly wings out. Very quick move. Pretty good. The side sig, much slower. Much slower side sig. It's a big wind up into this baseball hit. That's a home run right there. That's a home run. It has a pretty big animation, it seems like. Pretty big hitbox, I would presume. But this one also has a different charge version. It works a little similarly to Fate Side Sig on the Scythe, although it is much slower. The projectile itself is also way larger, which makes sense with her archetype. She's got seven strength and she's got seven dex, so the quick upward end sig, and then the longer side sig, more powerful. This projectile is pretty unique. It moves very slowly, like I mentioned, and the animation takes a while to come out, so this is a read move. I mean, you're not gonna hit this on reaction a lot of the time, as long as people are familiar with their kit. And this is something you do have to be careful about. This is the hitbox. I mean, it extends pretty far upward. As you're landing, you gotta be careful. And we're already moving on to the down sig right here. This one is a trap. This is like Yumiko's down sig on the bow. Yumiko's down sig, well, it's more like the bow than the hammer one since it's grounded. And it captures the opponent in this little petal vortex. You'll notice they don't really get sent anywhere and they're in stun for a good amount of time, enough to get an extra hit. You'll notice the active frames are quite long. It's kind of like a mine on the ground. It's similar again in function to Yumiko's, but it's on a completely different weapon. Because of that, you have to worry about a completely different area on bow compared to greatsword. And here you'll see the true combo you can get it into a nair get that knockout again it's a setup move it's not going to kill on its own and i love to see moves like this i love to see little mines on the ground unique signatures especially on the down sigs that aren't just i hit strong Moving on to the spear now, we've got the end sig. It's this quick upward slash with, again, a bunch of the pedals. I think it's similar to Moonin in that when the pedals are active, it's an active hitbox, and then when they're fading away, they're not. But you'll notice it hits on the ground. Again, another upward end sig that hits on the ground. Incredibly strong. I mean, that's just off the bat. Incredibly strong. You'll also notice it hits kind of upward as it's almost 90 degrees, and then leaves you hovering in the air for a little while. You'll notice it right there. Yep hovering in the air, which is super good because it means that if you're landing it, you're trying to extend, you have all that time to chase dodge, notice where your opponent's gonna go. Very strong move. Side Sig is my favorite. I mean, this is gonna be everyone's favorite. You get the big beetle. They said his name, it was like Domo, but I'm gonna name him Mugo. There's a lot going on with this move, so I'm probably gonna spend the most amount of time on it, which is it's, it's kind of fitting because that animation, there's a lot to unpack anyway. But you'll see once you release or once you're out of the signature, there's a bit of outside momentum. If you hold backward, you're not gonna actually go very far, like right there, you're not gonna launch yourself off stage. But if you hold forward, that exit momentum is pretty helpful. It's kind of like Reno's side sig on the blasters, if you remember that on release. Here's a slide charge version. You'll notice if you hold outward, you're just gonna launch yourself and then you can cut that momentum with a jump, like right here, release hold out, jump in the opposite direction, that momentum is canceled, and it also catches dodges. You'll see the hitbox is actually very, very far upward. Look at that hit. Look at that hit. That's that, where's that, where's, where's that purple going or that pink going? And then you get the little one-two combo right here. Uh, it's also, you can use it as GCs. Of course, GC recovery is gonna be great with this move. Now, something to note is that the startup actually does take quite a while. You gotta summon the beetle and then get on the beetle and then move forward on the beetle. So it is reactable. As long as you play enough against Arcadia, you'll learn the timing of it. But of course, when she's first released, I feel like this move is gonna, is gonna do very, very well. But that's how it always goes. Sphere Down Sig is another one of those setup trap mine pedal moves. And this one actually launches you into the air quite quickly with those little butterfly wings. This move is good. This move is very good. Hard to punish. You're gonna see later on the recovery frames. And you can true combo this into something like side air. It's not gonna have very much variable force, if any at all. So this is gonna be a killing combo if you wanna hit that. Ground and kill options on the spear. Very, very good. And you notice, once again, don't pay attention to me saying you'll notice active frames. That's gonna suction them in there. I don't know if it means the move is gonna drop. Let's say someone does a gauntlet side light at the same time, they just fall out of it, but I don't know. Look at that recovery time. You're gonna use the move, you jump up into the air, kind of like Queen Nye down sig on the spear. Very little recovery time, hard to punish. You're high up in the air. As for stances, you're probably gonna wanna lock in the defense or the speed stance. 7744 is not the greatest stat spread. We can all come to agreement on this. I'm not gonna mince words. It's not great. It's not terrible, but it, 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 it could be a lot better. Speed is definitely the best stat in the game right now, and defense 
defense is arguably second. You can make an argument for strength as well, but I'm probably going to lock in speed for that reason. The upside is she's going to hit pretty hard. Greatsword already does a bazillion damage if you get your string, so that's going to be an advantage. And then some of those signatures just look insane. Spear and Sig is going to be a nightmare. All in all, from first impressions, just from the reveal, which is very, very limited information, I could be completely wrong, is that she's going to be relatively strong. Some of her signatures are absolutely insane. Some of the best spear sigs in the game, it looks like. But her stat spread does leave a lot to be desired. I think her weapon comp is actually pretty good. A lot of control. You got spear, air control, insane. Greatsword, ground control, insane. Also, air control, very good. So it's going to be a very difficult character to play against. I have a feeling that she's going to be an underrated legend who has some very, very severe specialists that know their way around the signature kit, especially the down sigs in such a cute fashion that if you're playing against a good Arcadia, it's going to be rough. I don't think she's going to be the go-to Greatsword Legend, I think that's still going to be Jayon and Mako, but she is going to fill a spot kind of similar to Yumiko, kind of similar to Magyar, where they have these very dedicated players that know their way around the kit perfectly. That's enough about predictions though, we haven't even played her, so why am I even saying this? I think she comes out tomorrow, I'm not sure, but let me know what kind of stuff you'd like to see, I'll maybe do the wowzers, I'll maybe do a review of her signatures and a quick guide, I don't know, let me know, I'll see you in the next one, take care everyone. So my prediction is that it's, it's going to have Orb. We dodged it, guys. We dodged it.